Hey everyone, it's Michael Goosebumps fan. I hope you're doing well today. I have a book review for you for the latest Goosebumps book to be released. It was just released a few weeks ago. I finally got around to finishing it up and reading it and so on and so on. Uh, this is Goosebumps Slappy World, the current era of Goosebumps books being released by R.L. Stein. Number 13, Monster Blood is back. Yeah, this is a big one a lot of us were waiting for. Uh, the last book that I ever read of Monster Blood was, of course... <laughs> Goosebumps Horrorland number three, Monster Blood for Breakfast, which was terrible. It was a really, really bad book. Uh, from the get-go, Monster Blood is Back is hands down way better. Way better than Monster Blood for Breakfast. <laughs> I will say that up, and, up in front. Uh, if you're one of the people like myself who did not like Monster Blood for Breakfast and you wanted a better improvement this time around, it's been a while since we've had a new Monster Blood book. I will tell you, I think this is a huge improvement. This is not a perfect improvement. It's a really good entry in the series, though, for the most part. <clears throat> so, as I get through this review, there's going to be a lot of criticisms that I have, a lot of funny things to talk about here that I thought were kind of amusing. Um, so, kind of getting with the plot first. I got to tell you again, I really enjoyed the book. I think it was a really fun book. Kind of your typical Goosebumps read, kind of your typical Monster Blood tale. Reminds me a lot of the original books, like 1, 2, 3, and 4, and I really love that about it. I think Stein really hit that out of the... How to, Hit it out of the park like a home run, is what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> my throat feels weird. It's kind of been a cold day today. I feel like my throat's kind of dry. And my voice sounds different. It ain't COVID. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so basically this was advertised, of course, with the picture the picture here, the monster blood creature with a, an apron and a chef's hat and forked teeth and uh, some hands in here and stuff. Basically, this is a cooking episode. This is like Goosebumps meets Hell's Kitchen. If you love Gordon Ramsay's Hell's Kitchen show, which I do, there's a lot of that in here, as oddly as that is. There is nobody screaming and yelling at children and making them cry, which would have been excellent and made it even better. Uh, essentially, you have two girls, Nicole and Sasha. Sasha is our main character. Nicole is the best friend character. They love to cook. They absolutely love to. They're terrible at it. One of the first recipes they mention in here is that they love to make bologna cake. I wanted to barf I don't use the word barf. I don't even like the word barf. I wanted to barf when I heard the words, or read the words, bologna cake. I just see like an angel food cake, just a big old piece of bologna, you know? Just disgusting. So gross. Um, watch that be a real thing, like in France or something. Anyway, so they're terrible at what they do. And their school has a tryout currently to be on a show that's like a kid's cooking show. Again, kind of like a Hell's Kitchen kind of cooking competition type thing. But not exactly like that. Kind of like your typical Food Network type stuff if you're familiar with the USA Food Network TV channel. Um, my wife and I watch a ton of that. <laughs> we really do. I like Ramsey stuff. She's more of like The Kitchen, that show. You know, stuff like that. <clears throat> well, these two want to be on the show. And uh, Nicole and Sasha are just kind of honing their cooking skills and so on and so on. Now, Toby, Sasha's, our main character, her best, or her not best friend, her little brother is about to have a birthday party, and she's trying to figure out what to get him for his birthday. And uh, she ends up picking up from a little toy store that's kind of like a, a kind of a cool haunted mask type thing, you know? Like this particular store is kind of like the haunted mask store where Carly Beth gets her mask from, where it just kind of is there one day and then it vanishes the next day. It's kind of like that with the story, too. And she happens to go through the store and find a little container that says Monster Blood on it. <clears throat> she buys a couple of these, decides to give those to Toby for his birthday when it comes up in a week or so. And uh, she goes home. And the Monster Blood tends to become an issue already. It's a very interesting thing how this thing works. And, of course, if you love Monster Blood books, again, I'm only a fan of, like, 2, 3, 4, and uh, the TV book. The TV book. But I'm a fan of this one. I think this feels like those first four books, if you really like the feel of those books, mainly the second, third, and fourth book, if you really like the feelings of those, the way they're written, the way Evan and his friends kind of come across, the way they're kind of written, the, the kind of adventurous feel to it without, like, leaving a town type of situation, if you like that, if you like the creativity to that story, you'll like this, I think. There's a lot of cooking aspect to it. I was surprised by that. Of course, at the cooking competition, there's also a couple of kids from their school, too, that constantly just do everything they can to be awful. <laughs> they kind of like mess with people's ovens and stuff during the cooking competitions. There's a lot of that in here that I was surprised to see how much we had cooking competition stuff in here. I think it was a nice add-on to a Monster Blood story. If you were going to make a modern-day Monster Blood story for the new Goosebumps show coming out, or supposedly coming out, I would have adapted this for that, in my opinion. Either that or Monster Blood 2, one of the two of them. Uh, this is good. It's a really solid book. I really enjoy it. 
Uh, I do have some other things to talk about that I thought was kind of interesting. <clears throat> For example, there's a ton of Star Wars references in here, like a ton of Star Wars. I love some Star Wars. One of the first things I noticed in here is that their school that they go to is Adam Driver Middle School, which is the actor who plays Kylo Ren. I love Kylo Ren. It's the best thing out of the whole new trilogy, the sequel trilogy. Uh, Adam Driver Middle School. I thought that was pretty cool. At one point, the kids are crossing from Harris Harrison Street over to Samuel Street or Jackson Street, something like that. I think it was Samuel Street. Anyway, Harrison Ford, Han Solo, Samuel L. Jackson, Jackson Street or whatever. Mace Windu is who he plays. Of course, you, you know who Sam Jackson is. We all love him. Um, yeah, really a lot of Star Wars references in here. I might have missed some. I don't know. I don't think I did because I'm a pretty... I'm a pretty adamant Star Wars fan. I know a lot of stupid, geeky things a lot of people shouldn't know. Uh, <laughs> I really enjoyed that part. I thought it was a little odd. It seems like Stein must be some kind of Star Wars fan. You'll see some of these books like Beware of the Snowman, the old classic series book that had a really, really, in my opinion, very iconic Goosebumps moment that was clearly a ripoff of a Star Wars moment. It, it really worked, in my opinion. I liked it a whole lot. Um... Let's see, what else was there to talk about with this book? I love the cover, by the way. I know I don't really love the Brandon Dorman covers a lot of the time, unless it's something like Ghost of Slappy. But this is a great cover. I really dig this. I think it's good as a, as a Monster Blood cover. Much better than the Monster Blood for Breakfast cover, in my opinion. But uh, <laughs> it's, it is what it is. It's very goofy for this very goofy type of book. Monster Blood books are not scary. If you're getting into Goosebumps for the scare factor... This is not a scary book. This is more of the humorous type of book that I enjoy a lot of the time from Goosebumps. I think sometimes as good as Goosebumps and Stein, typically, because he's the writer, can handle scary things, he can do humor very well. Very, very well. And it works extremely well here. I really enjoyed that. Um, now, this is the big issue that I have. I kept hearing nonstop about the ending of this book being horrible. Just absolutely downright horrible. And I'll tell you, I went today to work and had to leave the book on the last 12 pages. I read that next chapter when I got home, and I was kind of like, oh, I don't know where I'm going with that. I read the next chapter. I was like, oh, okay, I'm good. Read the next chapter. Really, really loved that. It felt like a Monster Blood story, particularly Monster Blood 2 and 3, mainly 3. This feels a lot like, in the end, a lot like Monster Blood 3. And then I read the last chapter, which is like two pages long. I was so disappointed. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I was so into this book. This is one of those books like Slappy's Nightmare, the old Series 2000 book that we all rant about here on the channel. Well, I do. I'm the only person on this channel. But still, anybody who's seen my review for Slappy's Nightmare and has read that book, you know that I love that book until the last chapter of the book, and then it ruins the whole story. It ruins the whole context of the story. It's one thing to have a book like My Friend Slappy, the last Goosebumps Slappy World book to come out, where the whole book is very cute, very silly, uh, focused on a candy factory and stuff. Very interesting story. I really enjoyed that. And then, like, the last chapter has that last couple of sentences that just, you're like, what? Why? Why would you do that, Sam? Why would you end it on that note? But it doesn't ruin the context of the whole story. It doesn't ruin the perspective that you're viewing the whole story with, or, or kind of the view or the lens that you're seeing it through. The ending of this story, I saw a million miles away, and I thought it was debunked, <laughs> right? The last chapter of this book is a great example of one of those books, like Slappy's Nightmare, that completely, the last chapter changes the whole ending of the book, it changes the whole context of the entire story, and it's garbage. It's genuinely garbage. It really is. And it, it really bummed me out, because I heard, I heard people constantly saying how bad the ending was, and I thought by the time that I got to what I thought was the conclusion, I was down for it. I was like, dude, I'm going to put a really positive review on this. I'm going to make my next ranking video immediately after this video and give it a higher ranking than what people probably expected from me. And this will probably still maintain the general area of where I was going to keep an ad for my ranking. Yeah, I'm going to do a Goosebumps Monster Blood ranking series update after this video, in case you want to check that out. Uh, this will probably still be in the same exact area that I thought it would be in. But I will say this. I am extremely crushed by how awful <laughs> that last chapter is and how it ruined everything. It completely ruined most of this book for me. But I will say, even though that was horrible and people like Spongy and some other folks out there, I think Lou was one of the ones who recommend or who mentioned that as well. I could be wrong. I don't think Lou has read the book yet. Even though I know Spongy for sure had mentioned this to me. Thank you again, Spongy, for always commenting. I always appreciate you, buddy. Uh, I knew it was coming, 
and I hoped that he was wrong, <laughs> but he was not. I'm very crushed by that last chapter, man. I, I really am. I dug most of this book. I really, really dug it. I was telling my wife all about it, about how much I enjoyed this, and how much of a recovery, and still, even after the bad ending, I still think this is a huge, massive improvement over Monster Blood for Breakfast, the Horrorland book. The last book that we got from Monster Blood. This is still better than that. Even though it has its flaws, it's still better. And I stand by that. I'll die on that hill. I will totally die on that hill. It has so many fun things about it, so much great humor in here. I love the cooking competition added into the story. I think it has so many great things about it that work so well. I highly recommend it. If you haven't read Monster Blood is Back, you're missing out. This is a really good Slappy World book. Uh, again, the ending is a very wish-washy change-up for a lot of us. I think a lot of us are going to have different opinions on this. and It's going to be interesting to see what the comments say, but with people coming to read it for the first time and talk about it down there... Uh, I was really into this. I really dug it. That last chapter just completely killed it in a lot of ways. I gotta be honest with you. Uh, in my headcanon, that last chapter is not there. Not that I really care about headcanon, but in my personal Michael Goosebumps fan headcanon, that's not there. I promise you. Uh, very much like Slappy's Nightmare. Last chapter is not there. <laughs> you know? Um, I really dug this. I recommend it just tremendously. It's such a great book. Um, if this was the last Slappy World book we'd ever get, I'd still be down for it. I'd still say it's a great book. Um, I am not wanting another Monster Blood book ever again. I don't want anybody else to touch this. I want them to leave it to leave it alone because the last book was so bad and this one was so great and really improved in a lot of ways compared to Monster Blood for Breakfast. This should be the last Monster Blood book. In my personal opinion, it should be. I think if you're going to adapt any kind of Monster Blood stories to the new show, do 2, 3, 4, and this one. Don't do Breakfast. Keep away from that. It's a piece of crap. Uh, what else is there to say? I don't think there's anything else. Uh, if I had to rate Monster Blood as back on a five-star basis, I'd probably give this about a four out of five stars. I know that's a pretty high rating, but, I mean, I was very impressed. Just the ending is a big, big letdown. <laughs> it's a big letdown. So, what are your thoughts on Monster Blood is back? What are your thoughts on Slappy World? Put all those comments down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say about all that. Of course, throughout the book, of course, it being a Slappy World series book, we also have the little interruptions here and there. There's only, like, the beginning, the middle, and the ending of this, having Slappy kind of cut in and you do a little commentary, throw a couple of jokes in there. Once again, that's not really distracting. It's just kind of there. It's okay. It's fine. It, it, it fits better for books like this because they're more humorous, whereas like Diary of a Dummy was genuinely eerie and creepy, had a lot of tension to it. I don't know how well that worked with that book, but I, I liked it. I remember liking it there, but it kind of distracted you from how good the book was, you know? This is a great book where it complements this book a lot. It really helps kind of just add something, a little bit of flavor in there. I know we're talking cooking book, but, you know, it's like the seasoning to the story. Just to add a little Crypt Keeper type feel in there. Of course, Slappy World Series, he is the Crypt Keeper. You know, he's always making jokes like that and kind of popping and making little comments about characters and stuff. And that can be fun. And I think this does it well. Uh, one of the better ones in recent memory that did the, the whole Slappy commentary thing very well without being too obnoxious. But uh, anyway, Monster Blood is back. Four out of five stars for me. I really enjoyed it. I highly recommend it. If you haven't picked it up yet, it should be out now. You should be able to get your hands on it now. Usually where I live, it takes a couple of weeks to get caught up at Barnes & Noble and stuff to get it. I ordered this on Amazon, finally got it to my house, and I read it, and it was really good, and I'm very impressed with it. I'm very happy that it was a good, solid Monster Blood book. It has that silliness, that cartoonishness to it. And I love, I, I really, honestly, I wanted to say I loved it. I really honestly, deep down, want to say I love it until the end. Kind of like Slappy's Nightmare. I love it until the last chapter. It just kind of kills itself for me. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Put them down below. Thank you for watching. Again, ranking video after this video. It's an update on the Monster Blood ranking I had already done a while back for the series. So check that out as well. And uh, thank you for watching. God bless you. Goodbye.